Hi class! In this video, we'll be talking about creating graphs with ggplot. In this course, we'll largely construct visualizations using the ggplot function from the ggplot2 library, which is one of the libraries in the Tidyverse suite. Though the ggplot learning curve can be steep, its grammar is intuitive and can be generalized once mastered. This video will go over the basic functions and syntax needed to create plots using ggplot. The next video will go through more detailed code. The concept map you see here illustrates how some of the main functions we'll use for plotting are related. We will discuss these in more detail in both this video and the next. Before jumping into plotting code, let me first introduce the data that I'll be using in the first couple examples. The data called cum underscore harvest has four variables, date, weight, cum underscore harvest, and wt weight underscore lbs pounds. The date is the date the vegetables were harvested or picked, weight, is the weight in grams of the vegetables harvested that day. Cum harvest is the cumulative weight in grams of the vegetables harvested up to that date. And weight pounds is the cumulative weight in pounds. These are vegetables harvested from my own garden. The ggplot2 package originally authored by Hadley Wickham is based on a visualization framework by Leland Wilkinson called the Grammar of Graphics. The key pieces of the framework are data, geometric objects, and aesthetic attributes. The main idea is that, quote, a statistical graphic is a mapping of data variables to aesthetic attributes of geometric objects, unquote. Let's break that down a little bit. Data is our data set that contains variables, which are in the columns, with many observations, which are the rows. Geometric objects, this is what we observe on our plot or the type of plot we create. Points, lines, bars, etc. Aesthetic attributes are parts of the geometric object that we observe. X, Y position, color, shape, size, etc. In general, a basic plot can be created using the template in the first code chunk over here. Where everything between these arrows would be modified to fit your needs. So now we're gonna break down, let me actually go back a slide. So here's the plot that was created from this example co plotting code. We're gonna now break down this example plotting code. First, we call the ggplot function, which is highlighted in yellow. It takes two arguments, data and mapping. So data is the data set and the mapping I'll talk about in just a moment. This function alone sets up the plot that we will eventually create. If it's used all by itself without this geom piece after it, it will create a blank plot, sort of like a blank canvas. Inside the ggplot fun function, the other we, excuse me, we need to tell it the data set we will use to create the plot. So in this case, we're telling it to use cum harvest. Next, we tell it the aesthetic mapping. Inside that AES function, which is short for aesthetic, we tell it which variables are mapped to which aesthetics in the plot. In this example, we have told it that date is mapped to the x-axis aesthetic and weight pounds is mapped to the y-axis. We can map variables to other aesthetics, excuse me, including color, size, alpha, 
which controls transparency and shapes. Keep in mind that anything inside of the AES aesthetic function should be a variable. Later, we'll learn about changes we can make that are not aesthetic mappings. After setting up the plot, we can add layers via the plus sign. We will always add a geom layer, and we'll see very soon other layers we can add to enhance our plots. The geom layer tells it what type of plot to create. In this, in this example, we have told it to plot points. So specifically, we've used geom point, which tells it to plot points. Before showing you how to do more plots, I want to take another minute to talk about the code. There are a few different ways we can write the same code. You'll see these variations show up in my notes and in other places like on the internet. So I want to point them out now. Here, I've removed the argument names. This is okay as long as the arguments are in the correct order. So you can see that in the second set of code, I've removed data equals and mapping equals. I can put the aesthetic mapping in the geom function rather than in the ggplot function. So here, uh, the mapping was in ggplot. Down here, it's in geom point. When I do this, that mapping is only available within that particular geom. When we put the mapping inside of ggplot, that mapping is actually passed to every geom we might add. I can pipe. A pipe is this special set of symbols. It's this percent, arrow percent, that's called a pipe. There's a keyboard shortcut, Command Shift M, and I'll mention that more than once. So I can pipe my data into ggplot. We'll learn more about the pipe later. For now, just know that it takes what's on the left of it, so the data set, and it uses it, it uses it in the function that's on the right. So uses it in ggplot. Another thing we might want to do is save a plot. We can do that by including the left arrow plus a dash uh, before the code and giving it a name on the left. In this example, the plot has been saved and not printed out to an item called harvest over time. So in this first chunk, I have only saved that plot to something called harvest over time. Once I type out that name, it will then print out the plot. Okay, that's all for this video. Get ready for the next video where we'll move to our studio to do some examples.